Hello everyone and welcome back to Frank Film Club where today we're going to be chatting about the iconic Mean Girls from 2004 which was written by Tina Fey, icon legend and directed by Mark Waters. If you're not familiar with the story, I'm sure we all are, but if you're not, I'll give you a little logline. Katie joins a new public school and befriends Janice and Damien. They warn Katie to avoid the plastics, a group of girls led by Regina George. Things get worse when she falls in love with Aaron Samuels, Re Regina George's ex-boyfriend. That's actually the logline that it said on Google. I feel like there's so much more to the story, but... If you've not seen it, go watch it. <laughs> also, where have you been? Yeah, can you imagine <laughs> someone being like, oh, that sounds great. I need to go watch that. <laughs> like after listening to that, like starting this episode. I don't know. It's just like, I feel like it's a movie that everyone's seen. Anyway, um, this episode, um, we're going to be chatting about this movie, but we're also going to chat about the Broadway version that I watched in 2018. And we're also going to talk about the film adaptation of the Broadway musical that you've both seen. So we'll do a little nod to that too. Renee Rapp, if you're watching, we all love you. Um, but before we get into all of that, girls, how you been? What's been going on? What's new? Tell me. Things are good. What have you been doing? Um, I have been working on a film at Raps. You have also been doing that with me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, we're going into production of our first feature film. Oh! That's exciting. Which is really, really exciting. So it's been quite busy and fun and mad. But yeah, this is what we've been wanting to do and we're doing it. Yeah, very exciting. I can't wait until you can tell people what it is as yeah. well. Mm. It's going to be great. How have you been, Han? Yeah, good. Also working on some stuff, which has been exciting. I'm working with some really, uh, one director in particular that you know when you just... We just really bounce off each other really well and are interrogating characters in a way that I just find so thrilling. Mm -hmm. Like the psychology of the dynamics between them and just everything is, uh, we're at a really exciting part, um, point with the film. Yeah. So really been, it's been a really nice creative week. That sounds so good. Love that. You? Yeah, I've been good. Um, it's actually my sister's birthday today. Happy birthday, Beth. Um, and I'm having a massive birthday party in a couple of days that you're both coming to. Um, so I've just been prepping for that and wrapping my sister's birthday present and um, watching Mean Girls. It's been, Amazing. Yeah. What a dreamy time. Well, I'm glad that you're both doing well and I'm really excited today to be talking about Mean Girls. Um, so as I said before, uh, this is written by Tina Fey, directed by Mark Waters. It stars Lindsay Lohan, Rachel McAdams, Tina Fey, Amanda Seyfried, Jonathan Bennett, Tim Meadows, Lacey Chabert and Lizzie Kaplan. I mean, amongst many, 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 many others. Um, you can watch it at the moment on Amazon, I think. I mean, I bought it on iTunes like... I don't know, 12 or 14 years ago, and I watch it like once a year at least. Um, so that's how I watched it. Um, but I guess, first of all, I'd like to hear your stories of how you first watched it. Did you rewatch it specifically for this episode or do you just know it well enough that you didn't need to? How, yeah. how was it for you? I've no idea when I first watched this film because it's definitely one that I've seen so many times that it's all just blended into one. Um, and but I did rewatch it for this. Had also seen it probably like a couple months before, because um, it is one that, like you, I just come back to a lot of the time. It's quite just like a fun, nice comfort film. You know, you're gonna have some easy laughs. Yeah. Um, yeah. I you you just know what you're getting because I've seen it a million times. Mm. <laughs> mm. And you know all the the all of the sayings, just like all of the lines in it, are so iconic. Now yeah. That yeah. I feel like it's so ingrained into like a whole generation of of people. Yeah. 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 I think I am that generation as well because I was 14 when this came out or 13. Anyway, um I was definitely target audience and I feel like I definitely don't remember when I watched it first, but I rewatched this a lot with my friend who's now my sister-in-law, Steph, mm -hmm. um who was my friend when I was a teenager. Um, and, uh, yeah, I've rewatched it a lot and I don't rewatch films too often, but I recently rewatched this with Lodz, who is my stepdaughter and she's, she was 16 when we rewatched it. 
Um, but, so I didn't rewatch it for this episode, but I did go and see the musical film. Had, nice. had Lod seen it before? I think she maybe had seen parts of it through Steph. Right. But um, I don't know if she'd watched the whole thing. Right. Mm. Yeah. Uh. It's like such a formative part of high school, I think, like having a sleepover and watching this movie. Not like Twilight days. <laughs> like, but I feel like, yeah, this movie just meant a lot to me in school. And I just remember it being, just being captivated by it immediately and feeling like this is going to shape my personality for the rest of my life. <laughs> and it did. Um, <laughs> but it's just so rare to find high school movies that hold up to this level. Um, and I wanted to see if you guys have any others that you watched when you were in high school or that you feel are like anywhere close to this. This is definitely like the leading one, but another one that I enjoyed was Anger Songs and Perfect Snogging. Oh, of course. Mm. Loved that. Yeah, agree. And then a bit later, Emma Stone did Easy A and I thought that one was also wicked. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they're not mean girls, but they are still brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Anger Songs and Perfect Snogging was way more relatable than Mean Girls. Mm -hmm. um, mainly because it's British. Or oh, no, actually, I think yeah. the characters are. And also, like, they were just snogging and not having actual sex. <laughs> I remember That's watching Mean true. Girls and being like, this is so grown up. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, my God, cover my yeah. eyes. <laughs> also, the age, like, the, the ages of the actors yes. in Mean Girls is, like... How yeah. old, I mean, you might get to this, but oh. I don't know how old they were when they're playing what, 16-year-olds, yeah. 18? Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to have to find that out. Yeah, but they're obviously there. so much older. But in Angus Thongs, they're teenagers. George is like us. Yeah. Just as a volivant. No, yeah. as, a, <laughs> as an olive. <laughs> as an olive. <laughs> I, can't, I honestly can't think. I think that's why I loved Mean Girls so much at the time and why it's held up so much is because I felt like I knew that all of my friends were so funny and that I was hilarious, mm -hmm. but I never saw before Mean Girls a film that showed women be so funny or a comedy, a teen comedy targeted with females, targeted to females. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm sure some others will come to mind when I'm on the train on the way home. But yeah. I, that's why I love this one. Mm. The movie was adapted by Tina Fey in 2004 and it was inspired by Rosalind Wiseman's book from 2002, which was called Queen Bees and Wannabes. Have you ever read it? No, but I've read a lot about it. Tell us. And it, so it's a book about, it's a book for mums about like how to look after your daughters when they're going through all these stages. And Mean Girls was one of the chapters of like when it, when like girls get nasty. Um, so I just thought that that's mad that that's what it's come from. Yeah, like a help book for mums. Self-help book. Wow, yeah. I need to get it. Yeah. I do. <laughs> for Daisy. Yeah. 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 Oh, wow. That sounds brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, I want to read that. But it is such a massive part of it, the movie. Like, it's her Kate, Katie's relationship with her parents and Regina's relationship with her mum. And, like, you do really see a lot of that, like, how it's managed at home. Like, that mm. Katie doesn't even know how to be grounded because her parents don't even really know how to ground her. It's like funny. I mm. like, like that element of the story. Yeah. So yeah. But then also social hierarchy in school. And I think at that time, that was what really got me. I was definitely part of a friendship group that was like not the plastics. It was like very much Janice and Damien. And I kind of loved this idea of like taking revenge on like the people who were really popular just because I was unpopular, you know. Um, and so I remember like loving the movie for that reason and really connecting with them. But there's so many different parts of it. And I just, I guess everyone takes something different, but like, what are the, what are the pieces that meant a lot to you then? And what are the pieces that still hold up for you now? I think that just how difficult it is being a teenage girl in school mm. and the politics of that is crushing actually when you're in school you you obviously think this is the your well it is your entire world at the time and that how you are seen in school is how you will be seen forever and obviously now that we're older we know that that is absolutely <laughs> not true mm -hmm. at all um so it was that really that um I don't know just that everybody is struggling with that even if you're in like the cool gang 
there's still so much because I wasn't either there's still so much that they have to deal with with like the politics of it all yeah. you were in the cool group right not in lower school uh, I feel like when by the time I was in sixth form I feel like it was more like yeah <laughs> not that you call it like the cool gang but I but like I would say that it was more like the group of the school like it did feel more like that but in before sixth form I was not um but watching it this time like when we when we were growing up I feel like we're so, it's so ingrained into girls that girls are bitchy to each other and girls are mean um and when I was watching it I felt like this new mean girls was kind of like a little bit kinder to at times a little bit kinder towards the mean characters mm. and I was like I, want, I, I don't know I just don't know if it if it was if we by watching films like this it kind of ingrained that message into us even more that like girls are bitchy girls are mean to girls and that and that girls don't look out for girls and when actually that's not true yeah like do you think that this holds up with the like new generation because I feel like this idea of mean girls and girls being horrible to each other I mean was something that I definitely experienced but it feels like it's like trying to be a thing of the past like amongst younger like like young women Mm. today you know they're trying to be like okay we're not going to fall into that trope like let's if we can support one another then like we can only hope that men will support us too. But if we're tearing each other apart, then... Which actually is a line in the movie. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Yeah. yeah, like Tina Fey when they're... Yeah. And it, yeah. You have got to stop calling each other sluts and whores. Yeah. So in terms of the movie, so the movie happened in 2004 and then around 2017, um, the musical was released in Washington and then it moved to Broadway and then it did pretty well there and then was closed because of COVID. Um, so who, I mean, it wasn't doing like wonderfully. I mean, it went through like two casts, but it, COVID kind of killed it off. Um, and I think following the success of that, that's why they wanted to make this movie. Tina Fey wrote both. She mm-hmm. wrote the film and then she wrote the, like the play and then she wrote the, screen adaptation of the play it's like it's very why are we referencing inception again but we are yeah Mm. this is very inception um i believe it's coming to the west end as well it is i think so we should go and watch it because it was really entertaining i i looking from looking online i would say that the movie adaptation of the musical is doing better than the musical interesting yes um but not Maybe. doing as well as the original movie, yeah, of course. Right. Um, but it's interesting that they still all have a place. I like mm. that. I like that they all still, you know, entertain, entertaining yeah. at least. We have to talk about some of the most iconic lines, which are featured across all of these adaptations um, because they're just so brilliant. Do you have a favorite or do you have one that you say too often? My favorite always is, oh my God, Danny DeVito, I love your work. <laughs> Just because it's so, like, was that ad-libbed? Like, what? I would love to know how many things were ad-libbed and how many things were scripted. Yeah, I can't give you the definitive, but <laughs> but um, Tina has said that some of the funniest lines in the film have been, like, improvised by the actors. Wow, what a cast. Great. Yeah, I think that's probably my favorite line as well. It kills me. It's, it's so really good. It's so unexpected. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then it's gone, I mean, and then yeah, it's, yeah, we're done. Yeah. yeah, what about you? Oh my god, there's so many. Um, <clears throat> I'm a mouse. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. What are you? Why are you dressed so scary? <laughs> All of Karen's lines, to yeah. be honest with you, she's yeah. really funny. Karen, you can't do that. He's your cousin. <laughs> no, no, but, but he's my, my first, first cousin. cousin. So you have your cousins and you have your first cousin. She's just like completely bizarre. So, <laughs> prior to recording this episode, I asked you both to complete the BuzzFeed, which character are you? And so let's start with Lowry and guess what you got. I guess Katie Heron. Or... I'm just going to say that. Uh, we don't know who it's, we don't officially know who it's out of, but I would say, mm, 
It's hard, Gretchen. No, I got Karen. Karen, oh my God, that's brilliant. <laughs> okay. Okay, what do you think I got? It wasn't what I wanted. But I think it's Gretchen. Fine. Yeah. I think Regina. I wanted Regina so badly and I got Katie. Oh Main my character. God, you little angel. Ah. <laughs> wow. I think it was because it said like a new girl's a new girl enters your school, what do you do? And the question that the answer that I did was like nothing. <laughs> and then I was like, obviously that's what Katie did when she entered a new school. Yeah. But like, it's like, go up and make friends with her or like, you know, try and come. I was like, I imagine there's so many girls that joined my school and I just was like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what did you, okay. Um, Gretchen. Regina. <laughs> no. I was KD as well, <gasps> which is weird because the question that you just said, mm. I did answer it saying I would be friends with, I would make friends with oh. them. So I don't Mad. think, yeah, that wasn't my deciding mm. answer to my question. I want a couple of little fun facts. Tina Fey, she like really just drew on a lot of her experiences in high school when she was writing this screenplay. Um, and yeah, I feel like that kind of like quite clear that it's like drawn very directly because I I mean I found even the characters to be like pretty relatable this movie was shot like in a really short amount of time which kind of blew my mind I mean I don't know if we should try some guesses on how many days mm -hmm. that they took to shoot this film oh 24 I mean it was more than that 20 30 well, okay, now it's making it seem like it was actually 42 days, but I just feel like of a massive paramount yeah. blockbuster yeah. that like 42 days is like quite short, you know? Mm. Yeah, so quite nimble. Yeah. Um, and then, as I said before, a lot of the great parts of this movie are actually improvised and not written. And Tina Fey was very encouraging of like improvisation on set, which is That's brilliant. cool. I... Le I wonder how they auditioned them to know that they had that gold in them or if it was like a um because those how that those lines are so iconic like it's it's hard to believe that they would just come out with that and it would be, I mean would you you don't know which ones are I'd never no know I, are. I couldn't tell you which ones but I there's like a really good blooper reel of this movie which you should watch mm -hmm. because they always have like the double cameras going or maybe even three cameras like so as they can improvise Catch and on, get yeah. everyone's reactions and so on and so forth but there's moments in that where you can hear the director saying and now say this and now say this so they're just like doing like multiple takes of it um yeah but I couldn't tell you like exactly I need to they watch that. They need to that. publish the script. That would be cool. Mm, the original yeah. script. Yeah. Okay. Any guesses on the budget for the original Mean Girls? 30 mil. Okay. Oh, gosh. Um, actually, no, that's, maybe that's quite low for how big. I don't know. Yeah, I honestly it. have <laughs> no idea 20 years ago for something like this. Um, between 17 and 18 million yeah, US oh. dollars. Okay. Yeah. Huh? God, um, they must have made, yeah. Have you got box office? It says 130 million US dollars at the box office. That's a profit, isn't it? And that's just then. Like, I'm sure it's gone on. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. like you know, over the course of <gasps> the last 20 years. But 130.1 million US dollars. Tina Fey is raking it in from this film. Mm. From this And she's made more. Yeah. Well, she yeah. did it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy. So, any guesses on the budget Ooh. for the musical adaptation of Mean Girls? Surely that's got to be high. Like 60? I'm 90. Ooh. So they've played it safe. Oh. And they went for 36 mil. Okay. Um, which was the right thing to do because guess how much it took? Oh, 40. Ooh. So far off? So far. Um, Maybe this is US or something. I don't know. 30. It's taken 103.5. Mm -hmm. So that's great. But, um, yeah, I mean, if they'd have sort of really just gone for it and done like an 80 million movie, mm -hmm. then they wouldn't, yeah, it would have been kind of tragic. So it's good that they kept it pretty lean, pretty nimble. Um, yeah, and it's doing all right, you know. It's not like the most horrendous, like, remake of all time. And it's clearly doing something amongst new audiences, and mm. that's great. And good for you, Tina Fey. Rake it in. Yeah, absolutely.
One thing that I did really want to speak about, because this movie definitely still stands up today and people still love watching it today. But one thing that I wanted to speak about was that, you know, this film has faced a lot of backlash for its, um, just like stereotyping, racial stereotyping and sexism and homophobia and so on and so forth. I think like the reason why I still love this movie is because whenever I was watching it, I was watching the story of like revenge from these like teenage girls like, you know, taking it too far, basically, and then, like, losing sight of, like, the good in themselves and kind of, like, everyone's just unhappy. And I think, like, when Katie's, like, sucking the poison back out of her life, like, it's a beautiful message. And that's always the message I loved. And that's the message that, like, I'll continue to like. So it was never really part of these other bits of the movie, but I do think it's worth us speaking about because we sort of talk about this movie as, like, it's, like, the greatest movie ever. But there is a lot that's, like, kind of questionable from your experience watching the musical is a lot of that gone like how have they handled that yeah they've come they've completely stripped that out Mm. I think they've been really um yeah they've done it really well and it it, you don't really question much of it well you don't you don't question any of you don't have any of those like oh that is that's not okay yeah um yeah it's they've done really well there but you're also saying that they've potentially softened a little bit the meanness of the girls in mean girls it feels a little it's definitely more pc than the meanness and like you were saying earlier like we've you feel like you're a little bit more inside the mean girls group and understanding where they're coming from and why they're so mean yeah it kind of felt like this version the new version of mean girls i kept on just thinking i was watching um like sex sex edu- <laughs> sex education i kept th- thinking i was watching sex education like the musical movie because it was like <laughs> because it was um really well done and like it it was politically correct which is great also it was really um that it just is what teenagers like the what they were wearing and it just felt very different to to the original mean girls right mm. in it a way that felt it totally modernized it it actually made me feel a little bit like slightly like I actually didn't love the the new one Uh uh-huh um but maybe it was because it felt like like it wasn't for me yeah it it was like it's for a younger audience I'm not wearing cool things (laughs) like that (laughs) she's got two green jumpers with her today (laughs) but like I think they were wearing on Wednesdays we are green (laughs) oh yeah we're not wearing pink and it's Wednesday. Oh, I don't own anything pink, guys. Yeah, I got we didn't do it for Barbie. We're not doing it yeah, for mean true, girls. True. Yeah. I will not be dictated. <laughs> um, but yeah, I felt like maybe in this one, in this new one, it might it might be more relatable for people who are in high school now. Mm. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, it, it's so like TikTok heavy. Even the way that the film opens is them recording that opening song on the phone and then it opens up behind them. Should we give a bit of context? So did you watch? Yeah, so I watched the musical version on Broadway in 2018. And Renee Rapp was playing Regina George on Broadway. She wasn't the original Regina George, but she had just taken over. Would love to have seen that. And she was also just like, a, I don't know if she was like a TikTok star at the time, but she was like a viral sensation because of her incredible voice. Um, so... Yeah, a lot of, it felt very modern, it felt very young, it felt very cool. And I remember watching the musical and thinking, this is not the greatest show I've ever seen, but I still love it because it's got everything in it that I need from this musical and like none of the bits that are kind of questionable from the movie. And so I just kind of respected it. There were people leaving and walking out and like who, yeah, there was like, I think the guy who was playing Aaron Samuels like started just like singing and like, <laughs> I just watched like four or five people just like no. up and leave. Yeah. His character <laughs> does not slap in the movie. <laughs> Which I, th- actually, I, I liked him. But, uh, in but the he, movie. Yeah, mm. but he wasn't too heavily featured, which I also loved. Like none of the. <laughs> <laughs> that so- I loved him, but he wasn't in it, which I loved. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I- it was great that they gave him us him like, and small no, doses. <laughs> yeah. no, but I thought that was a good thing. Like, oh yeah, cool, because we don't need them. It's about the girls. Um, so yeah, I actually thought that was great. But I did like him. I thought, yeah. I really enjoyed this, by the way, the musical version. I agree. Like, I think some of the, like we were saying with Wonka, like some of the music's not super memorable. Um, 
But I just love a musical, girls. Do you? I did you not know? <laughs> I don't feel like I did know that about you. That are you being sarcastic? <laughs> I'm not. Are you mad? I love musicals. Did you know that? I actually didn't. Wait. <laughs> I don't. Have I just assumed a new personality since I watching Minky? Know. Yeah, you can't. Like, you wear and black as you all know, the time. I love yeah. musicals. Like, when did you when ever did love musicals? I love, love music? musicals. Oh my God. Yeah. I feel like the only musical we've all sat down Wonka. and watched together was Cats and Wonka. Okay, we're well, not great examples. <laughs> right. No. So, what's like your fave? What's like your top 10? Okay. Oh, well, okay, not 10. <laughs> <laughs> Three. <laughs> we haven't got the time. Um, I really love Waitress, okay. which I saw. In the West End. Okay. Um, I really love um, Moulin Rouge film. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and I really love um, Dear Evan Hansen stage, but not film. So I wonder if I would like the stage, stage. version of Mean Girls. Mm. I fully went into the film version thinking I'm really not going to like it. Um, but I was swept away. As soon as this music on and there's good performers and Renee Rapp, she's incredible, superstar. She sounds like Billie Eilish. Yeah, she's really unbelievable. She you know, like when you, I don't, what's it called? Vibrato. Vibrato. <laughs> <laughs> I was like. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> Let me just reply to this email real quick. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You should be a singer teacher. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I really, really enjoyed it. But I think if you did not love musicals and you're not enthusiastic about like songs and performance, then so, it just, I think you go into this and be very disappointed. So I'll wrap us up with a couple of letterbox reviews. I mean, I've just got one from the musical version. Okay. <laughs> which is by Vasily and she gave it 3.5 stars and said Sheen Girls. <laughs> <laughs> like if you have a shot from Sheen. <laughs> Wait, is this for the new one? Yeah, 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 the musical version. I, thought, I was thinking like Mr. Sheen, like the polish. Like, no, what? like Sheen. 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 Yeah, yeah. Sheen. yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's, That's so funny. funny. And then the original... Um, we have a review by Lucy who gave it five stars and she said, I still remember the specific feeling of being 10 years old and watching this for the first time. I thought this is the best movie I've ever seen in my life. And this is still <laughs> true. <laughs> That's how I feel about this movie too. Yeah. I love that. Brilliant. <laughs> so it was such a pleasure to chat about this movie. Do you have any parting thoughts? Um, I think that... It, it, yeah, I just feel like there's so much to be like unpacked with, with this film it, it, about f with female relationships. And yeah, I, I think it was done questionably, but really well in 2004. Great that it's had a, a remake that has that is not questionable. Um, but I just didn't love it as much. I Yeah, I just it's just great, but not. Ooh. <laughs> it, a new cinematic universe is being born yeah in front of yeah us. and i love that it's all female heavy driven stuff yeah i think if you can treat like anything which is remade treat it as its own thing and i think that's the key with mean girls the musical movie is that even some of the lines are delivered very different like even in their like cadence that they're they're delivered or when they're delivered i think if it's different enough so that it can be its own thing which I think is what Mean Girls the musical movie does mm -hmm. then it can stand alone as like a great piece of work and I think that's what the Mean Girls musical did for me so um I won't rewatch it but I will rewatch the original yeah every day for the rest of my life I think I don't know if anyone said this yet but they should call it the MGU rather than like the MCU like yeah. the Marvel Cinematic Universe the Mean Girls universe, the MGU. Yeah, I love that. Signing on to the MGU for Mean Girls 2, <laughs> where I play Janice Ian. Well, there was a Mean Girls 2, wasn't there? There that was. was. just absolutely... We can't even talk about happen. it. It was horrendous. Did you see oh, it? No, I didn't it was see so it. bad. It was horrendous. <laughs> okay, well, fantastic. Thank you so much for chatting with me about this movie today. Um, for you, those of you listening, thank you for joining us. Please follow us on TikTok and Instagram, where we are at 
Frank Film Club, where you can keep up to date with all of our new episodes. You can email us, filmclub at rap.world, um, and let us know your thoughts on all three versions of Mean Girls, or four, including the Mean Girls 2. Let us know what you thought on all of those. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you like and subscribe because it really helps us out. And if you're listening to us on your podcast platform, then follow us so as you can have notifications every week when we upload. Next week, we're going to be talking about The Iron Claw, written and directed by Sean Durkin. So have a watch. I don't actually know where it is streaming at the moment, um, but have a watch and come and meet us back here next week on Wednesday. This podcast was presented by Wrapped.